Hello everyone. In this video we will discuss about CA cervix. Almost everything about CA cervix in brief. So as we know this is the most common gynecological malignancy and is the second most common malignancy after breast cancer. Okay. The risk factors we have already discussed in our previous videos. The site of the CS cervix is also a site of CIN that is cervical intraepithelial neoplasia that is transition zone between columnar cell and squamous cell. Got it? Now what are the varieties of CS cervix? The most common variety is squamous cell carcinoma. There are also adenocarcinoma is there. But again, whenever the word you understand that adenocarcinoma, the second thought you should have is a glands. So, adenocarcinoma can also be there, but it is more common into endocervix, where the cervical glands will be there, which secretes the mucus. Now, the squamous cell carcinoma has again subtypes like large cells, small cells, small cells, and CA verrucous carcinoma. Small cell carcinoma is always uh, very severe and dangerous now what is the presentation how patient comes to you the patient comes to you again it's not a carcinoma that is more common in elder age it can be seen on in uh, younger people also so the patient comes to you with post coital bleeding or irregular spotting and bleeding so they may uh, they may have symptoms of deep seated abdominal pain in case of uh, spread car spreaded carcinoma already urinary incontinence because of involvement of ureters there is a triad of sciatic pain weight loss anorexia all these things also present in CSRX now when you do the PS examination per speculum examination you will find you may find a mass on cervix that is bleed on touch and friable also now how this carcinoma spread the most common route is lymphatic spread and then comes to hematogenic spread now which are the lymph nodes which are involved the first group of lymph node which are first involved is paracervical obturator internal iliac external iliac and then they go to the higher nodes that is paraortic node and common iliac nodes now what is the sentinel nodes that is paracervical nodes okay sentinel nodes are the paracervical nodes now how you diagnose diagnose or make a diagnosis of any cancer by biopsy so if you see the mass is there and you can take a punch biopsy now this uh, uh, CS cervix has a very very clear cut staging and the management of this cancer depends on staging so you need to do a staging and how will you do this thing in CA endometrium we have discussed that we will do staging by laparotomy exploratory laparotomy but here we don't do the laparoscopy uh, laparoscopy or laparotomy here we go by clinical examination ct scan mri usg cystoscopy per rectal examination proctoscopy all these things we can see the whether the other things are involved like bladder rectum lymph nodes are involved or not now the staging of CS cervix this is a very very good staging I have mentioned here you need to learn you know, if you want to remember this staging because it's frequently asked a question if you do any examination if you go for any examination this staging question is gonna be asked so you need to remember it clearly and do remember write it down and do remember by uh, reading two three times at least so now let's discuss about staging so stage number one the stage one means ca that is carcinoma strictly confined to cervix again we have gone uh, we have done a video on stagings of all three gynecological carcinomas 
so first of all you need to re see that video and then come to here so that you have better understanding on how this uh, on gynecological oncologies are staged with the help of FIGO staging so the stage one means the carcinoma is limited to the stage to the cervix only here you can see the picture here this is the lateral pelvic wall this is the uterus this is cervix this is vagina and these are three parts of vagina lower one third middle one third and upper one third vagina okay so only cervix is involved now this stage see uh, stage one is again any any cancers stage first stage is a minimal cancer So, so the stage one our goal here is to further classify the stage one that is a primary stage at, at this stage we can actually do many kinds of management here once the stage of any cancer or even in cervix is increased like two three four then we gonna have a limited options our primary goal of any surgical uh, any any tumor is to remove it to remove the tumor surgically completely not leaving behind any stresses of that tumor or any kind of uh, evidence of invasion or spread so the stage one is what the carcinoma is limited to the cervix now broadly divided into two stage stage 1a stage 1b stage 1b means the invasion it is a it is a microscopic or it may be macroscopic but the invasion is more than 5 mm when i talk about invasion what i uh, what i see is like this is the basement membrane and this is the epithelium the basement membrane has been crossed okay now it comes near below the basement membrane if the rate of invasion is more than 5 cm depth of invasion is more than 5 sorry 5 mm then we classify it as a stage 1b what is stage 1a stage 1a is a microscopic tumor less than 5 mm of invasion depth Again, it divided into stage 1A and stage 1A2. In stage 1A, we have less than 3 mm of invasion. And 1A2 means more than 3 but less than 5 mm of invasion. So here we also divided stage 1A into also 1A1 and 1A2. Why we do this thing? Because again here if you see in 1A1, the invasion is very less so this stage like 1a1 can be considered as a is not a very severe stage of CS, CS cervix so we can manage it very effectively now comes to stage b stage b is more than 5 mm for invasion now once we know that the tumor has invaded more than 5 mm then we need to decide that what is the size of tumor so if the size of the tumor is uh, in greatest dimension is less than 2 cm it is stage 1 b1 if the size of the tumor is more than 2 or more than 2 up to less than 4 cm the stage is 1 b2 what is stage 1 b3 the size of the tumor is more than 4 cm in greatest dimension so you need to understand what is stage 1 of the cervical carcinoma why what we are trying to establish here we want first that uh, that the depth of invasion we need to rule out so what is the depth of invasion if it is stage 1 uh, if it is stage 1 a that means depth is less than 5 mm if the depth of invasion is more than 5 mm then we have divided according to the size of tumor into 1b1 1b2 and 1b3 
now let's go to stage number two stage number two says that that the cervical cancer is beyond the uterus on and cervix so now the cervix and uterus is not alone that are in that are uh, in uh, involved the carcinoma has spread from cervix but yet this carcinoma has not spread up to lower one third of vagina and lateral pelvic wall so if you see this figure here so the carcinoma has involved the uterus and cervix also the upper one third of vagina middle one third of vagina also some amount of parametrium parametrium but the carcinoma hasn't reached to the lateral pelvic wall and lower one third of vagina so this stage 2 also divided into part a and b stage 2 a means upper two third vagina is involved but parametrium is not involved stage 2b means parametrial invasion okay in a stage a1 uh, 2a also divided into 2a1 and 2a2 depending on the size of the tumor 2a1 it is less than 4 centimeter 2a2 is less, more than 4 centimeter so very important classification is here if you if you focus here parametrial invasion is a very 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 important thing in CSRX because once there is a parametrial invasion then you are shifting from having fewer management options you might not be able to do a surgery because you don't know the how much spread is there and you want to go for chemo radiation so this is a very important a stage of cervical carcinoma in stage 2a the upper two third vagina is involved but not parametrium stage 2b parametrium is involved but not up to the pelvic wall now let's go for stage 3 stage 3 says that that uh, beyond uh, the u uh, the carcinoma is beyond the cervix and uterus is also involving lower one third of vagina and lateral pelvic wall parametrium like that so the lower one third vagina extend to the pelvic wall it may involve it, inv it may involve the ureters also and once the ureters are involved ureters are blocked and that's why hydronephrosis develops so they can cause hydronephrosis and and lymph node involvement that is pelvic and peraortic lymph node involvement stage 3 is also very important in view of remembering the things because lots of questions asked on 3 stage of CSRX so stage 3 a means lower one third of vagina is involved stage 3 b means extension to pelvic wall hydronephrosis stage c mean lymph node involvement and also divided into c1 and c2 so this becomes stage 3 c1 3 c2 3 c1 means pelvic node involvement 3 c2 means paraortic nodes involvement so this was the stage 3 now comes to stage 4 that is higher stage and the disease the carcinoma has been spread beyond the true pelvis it may involve bladder rectum which are the adjacent organs of the cervix and uterus and it may involve distance organs by hematogenic spread like lungs so stage 4 a means adjacent organs are involved what are the adjacent organs bladder rectum and stage 4 b means distance organs are involved now let's go for the management of the CSRX 
the management of the cervix by general view is two kinds one is the surgery and the second one is chemo radiation because the ca cervix is a radio and chemo sensitive now very important aspect in deciding the management of ca cervix carcinoma cervix is parametrial invasion parametrial invasion is the defining criteria of how we would proceed for management and what is parametrial invasion stage 2b stages less than stage 2b will have a clear cut surgery so that we can further increase the survival rate and we can get rid of the disease stages higher equal or higher than 2b now consider that that we should not prefer surgery in these cases because even after doing surgery we are not getting rid of the disease completely so we will go for chemo radiation so now you realize that parametrial invasion is the center point of management so what are the uh, stages which we will manage by surgery stage 1a uh, 1 1a2 1b all three types 2a 1 2a 2 once the stage comes to 2b then the things changes now one thing also important here is lvsi that is lymphovascular space involvement we will see the lymphovascular space involvement lvsi the pathologist who is examining the slide will see that whether the cancer cell are involving the lymphovascular space also or not if they are involving the lymphovascular space then we can we can effectively uh, uh, guess that that the spread has been occurred now let's go for the stages stage 1a1 now 1a1 is the very very mild form of ca cervix where the invasion is less than 3 mm so and there is no lvsi so this cancer can be managed very effectively if the patient is young and wants the fertility in future then we can simply do a conization followed by observation or by pap smearing and if we don't have to preserve the history uh, for fertility purpose then we can directly go for type 1 hysterectomy so in stage 1a1 if we want to do not preserve the infertility so sir if we want if we don't want to preserve the fertility we don't want the uterus now then we can directly go for type 1 hysterectomy that is common hysterectomy is done extra facial hysterectomy okay now comes the stage 1a plus lvsi that is if the stage 1a is even milder form but if we see the lvsi that is lymphovascular space invasion or it may be a stage 1a2 which sees that more than 3 mm of invasion then now we will prefer a radical hysterectomy that is a type 2 hysterectomy and lymph node dissection this treatment is offered to the patient if she wants to a preservation of the fertility then again we will go with conization but again this thing we will do a lymph node removal also because that is a lvsi is there there is a one surgery known as a tracheotomy what is tracheotomy tracheotomy includes 80 percentage of cervix is removed parametrium is also removed what is parametrium ligaments para cervical ligaments vaginal cuff is also removed and pelvic lymphadenectomy lymphadenectomy done so this is a 
kind of sub total hysterectomy so sub total hysterectomy we we do remove the uterus and preserve the cervix here what we are doing we are removing the cervix and preserving the uterus so that we can in future have a pregnancy and the patient can have a pregnancy but again once the goal of pregnancy is achieved that means once the patient delivers a baby then we can go for then hysterectomy that is radical hysterectomy now after doing this surgery even we need to do a follow up if we do a tracheostomy we need to do a follow up with peps we need to repeat the pap smear every 3 months for 2 years and every 6 months for 3 years okay so total 5 years we need to do this kind of extensive screening now comes to stage 1b1 and what was the stage 1b1 there is a invasion of more than 5 mm but the tumor size is less than 2 cm so here also we can have a option of preserving the fertility so if we want to preserve the fertility then we would go with the tracheostomy plus lymphadenectomy not uh, only conization is not going to help because again there is a depth invasion and 2 cm round tumor so we cannot do only conization we have to go for tracheostomy plus lymph node dissection if we want to don't want to preserve the fertility that is a good option radical type 3 hysterectomy or meig hysterectomy can be done what is type 2 hysterectomy it is a verdheim's hysterectomy what is type 3 hysterectomy is a radical hysterectomy also called meig hysterectomy now comes to this group of stages that is stage 18 stage 1b2 1b3 2a 2a2 2a1 2a2 all these stages if you see them they have a mass of around some centimeter like 4 5 6 cm but what they don't have is a paramedic uh, material invasion so until unt until unless we don't have a paramaterial invasion then we can safely go for surgery so this stages can be managed by surgery but the surgery should be done is type 3 that is radical hysterectomy surgery plus chemo radiation also and plus lymph node removal also so chemo radiation should be done in this thing now comes to these stages which are considered as a higher stages that is stage 2b 3 and 4 in this stages we have a only option of chemo radiation because surgery by doing surgery you cannot remove all the infected tissues and that is very difficult for patient also so here we do prefer a chemo radiation only okay so this was the management of different stages of ca cervix now let's discuss how we do radiation radiotherapy in ca cervix so the radiotherapy can be given by two types external beam radiotherapy and brachytherapy what is external beam therapy the source of radiation is outside and away from the body and uh, the, the used material is cesium then comes to brachytherapy brachytherapy in which we put the radiation source inside the body near to the tumors so there are two kind of basically uh, brachytherapy low dose and high dose so if we see there are two points of putting the brachytherapy point a1 is where is the point a this is the external os this is the internal os point a1 is 2 cm above and 2 cm lateral to the external os and point b means 2 cm above and 5 cm lateral to the external os here we do put uh, materials having radio radiation properties 
at point A we put 800 and point B we put 600 curie. Now this finishes, I think everything is finished in this uh, CS cervix. What are the chemotherapy? We use this platin as a chemotherapy and again this will be beyond the uh, goal of our thing that is superficial but uh, important knowledge around about CSRX. Thank you friends.